Toasters, my name is Blue and today we are lost in high Swap friends and mostly because I still have no idea what the fuck is going on with my audio- my recorder and um I talk majority of the time for this one so it's all covered up all right let's get into it I'm a little frustrated with it I'll figure it out we finished off volume 12 last time with our lovely little gremlin friend, and today we are starting off volume 13 of Fate, Fortune, and Fashion. Blah blah blah, friendship blah. <laughs> I'm gonna go with... Bold... Boulder. Boulder? Boulder. Boulder. That's what his name is now. You just aren't feeling it today. You're getting more and more of these gray nights recently. Nights where the call of the streets, that infinite ramble for companionship, just sounds exhausting and meaningless. You had days like this back on Earth, too, when getting out of bed just didn't seem worth it. The sun is beginning to slip under the horizon, and usually this would be the sign to rise and shine, or rise and dark, but all you've managed to do so far this evening is make yourself some coffee. You recently mentioned to Tagora that you drink instant, and he was so disgusted that he gave you a coffee machine. He claimed it, it was an old one he didn't use anymore, but it still had the price tag on it. Did he go out and buy you a coffee machine? <laughs> On the table sits a palm husk Kanya had taken off a dead kid, especially for you, and cradled in your hand is a mug Skyla sent. It looks like she painted it herself. There's a white blob on one side that you think is supposed to be Lady. You're even wearing the hoodie Mallet gave you to cut the evening chill. Yes, always wear the hood. Here you are, all wrapped up in the warm embraces of your friend's good wills, safe and sound, but deep inside you fester something, a gnawing existential dissatisfaction, that classic angst that philo philosophers wrote about. Your palm husk chimes and you pick it up lazily. What, another rando trying to slide into your DMs? Sorry folks, you just don't have the time for that anymore. You are a friendship connoisseur, a similar of the rarest of amicable ami vintages. You unlock the screen to find a message. Psst. I'm not certain that this line is secure. Actually, I'm positive that it isn't, but I'm risking contact because it's imperative that we speak. I'm sending you a rendezvous coordinates. If you wouldn't mind coming anytime after the sun has set... <laughs> loud. Ah! Whoa. What just happened? What? <laughs> okay. We're gonna start again. <laughs> I'm gonna cut it out. <laughs> We're gonna start again because I have no idea what just happened. Okay, you give me context on why it just zoomed past all of that. I pressed control in accident because my, you know, the F buttons and whatever, they're switched around for some reason, so I have to press FN to do the normal thing, so I guess I accidentally pressed control. <laughs> Anyways, psst, I realize that this is unorthodox, but please believe me when I tell you that this is not a trap or trick. Trick or trap. Yes, good job, Luke. I have important information regarding your place on Alternia. You attempt to reply to the message, but there isn't a cursor to or anywhere to input text. In fact, there doesn't even appear to be a message app open on your phone. It's just a random box text floating in the void. You barely have a chance to read it all the way before it vanishes and Google Maps opens with an address already programmed in. It's close enough to walk to, which is great, because using your stolen scuttle, scuttle buggy still makes you a little nervous, you know, even though the guy is dead. 
You smell the rest of your coffee and grab your shoes. Your GPS leads you to a shop you recognize. It's the cafe from your weird sort of date with Linra. Linra. Lynn. Just Lynn. Stop trying to read names. It's not too crowded at this time of day. There's the usual study crowd doesn't appear to be here. A couple of trolls are sitting around sharing toast and tea. Full fucking idiot. I explicitly stated I want an essence of day glow, not whatever this garbage is. Oh, you know that person. It really has been a minute, hasn't it? Our data stands in front of the counter, shouting at the ca cash register. Whatever, whatever automated system runs this shop has apparently gotten her order wrong. What are you looking at, hmm? This is absolutely none of your... Oh, it's you. Our data swiftly covers up her surprise, examining a sharp, perfectly steel-shaped nail. You look different. Better? Let's not exaggerate. She's still rude as ever! I simply meant you look less toxic, like toxic waste and more like run-of-the-brain grinder garbage. Wow. You tell our data that it's good to see her too. Man, this really takes me back. You've been so simple back then, so unevolved. You were laser focused on a single desire, friendship. Now, well, you still like friends. You really do. But you also have, like, a car and a sweatshirt with somebody's sign on it. You've moved up in the world. Fascinating. Oh, by the way, is she the one who summoned you here? Summoned? You? You must be joking. I haven't spared a single solitary thought for you since you dragged your wretched carcass out of my hive. I helped you with your emotions, Ardana! How dare! Absently, you push your hand into the pockets of your hoodie. Something crinkles between your fingers. You pull out a folded piece of notebook paper. Okay, this definitely hadn't been in there when you left your hive. You'd pass a couple people on the street, but you definitely don't remember any of them getting close enough to slip something in your pocket. Huh. It only says two words. Outback. Oh man, should you go? Go, go, go! Let's be real here. If you were ever going to refuse a suspicious invitation, you would have done it by now. You would have drawn the line at the vehicle death or murder church or anime club. You can't resist the social engagement. Your tragic flaw. Okay, I guess. Enjoy yourself. You head back through the beat it curtain, half expecting an alarm to ring. How do they keep people from just robbing stores here? Are there, like, lasers and shit? Oh, this is a pretty scene. You emerge into a tidy little back garden. None of the plants are the ones you recognize from Earth, but it's still nice. You cross the cross a bridge over a slow flowing stream and find yourself looking down at a path that blooms into a tight dizzying spiral maybe you're supposed to walk across it and ponder your place in the universe your com com contemplation would be inevitably cut off before it hits its climax because someone is sitting at the center of the spiral she is small compact shape with her hair cut short and choppy around her chin Wearing a shapeless white dress. Really more of a robe. Oh my I've been waiting for you. Thanks for coming. She speaks in a stage whisper, low and full of air, but it's still loud enough to hear across the path. You pick your way carefully across the spiral, making sure not to mess up any of uh, mess any of it up, treading only on the inside lines. The girl gives you a small secretive smile. My name is Boulder. You ask her if this is her garden. Does she love here? It's nice, but it's not exactly out of the elements. Actually, it looks like there's some storm clouds rolling in. You're probably going to get rain soon. Oh, yeah, my Rikupa coon is over there under that tree. She smiles again. You can't tell if she's messing around. In fact, she is entirely readable. Unreadable. Like, her face is totally reflective reflective surface and all you're seeing is the cloudy sky in the garden you can't tell how she feels about you at all 
Would you like to sit down? Inside the circle, or? She looks around like she's the only one just realizing that she's in the center, center of a complicated geometric pattern. It doesn't matter. I only wanted to see if you would follow the path or trample through it. But you didn't either. You forged your own way while taking care to preserve that which has come before. You ask her what that means. Maybe nothing. I'm not sure. The wind tosses her hair and the clouds chase each other across the sky. If the rain comes, it will come soon. Boulder continues to look at you as you shiftly awkward and sh shift awkwardly and shiver, pushing your hands into your hoodie. This is different than any other friend meetup you've had. Even with the others who purposely sought you out, there is a serenity to Boulder that all the rest lack. Or maybe that's just the sin as fuck part in getting to you. You try to remember what Boulder said to you in the message. That she somehow managed to appear, make man somehow managed to make appear on your phone, then immediately self-emulate. That she has some information for you about your place in Alternia or some shit like that. Did I say that? I guess I did. I just. Hmm. I suppose I wanted a chance to talk to you a bit before the end. I was starting to feel a little hmm, jealous, maybe. Right. You guess everyone has been going on about the funny dumb alien robot who's been prowling the countryside. No, that's not it. Though, no, I'm sure you're very funny. I just wanted a chance to talk to you. Someone who is so adrift in this fall of fate in the lens of the paradox. Paradox? You don't know anything about paradoxes. Well, you know what they are. You don't just see why they're relevant. built for this cosmic stuff. You're just an orphan from Earth from, with quick fingers for spaceships and apparently vehicles. So you stole that spaceship. Boulder gives you another sly smile. Oh, quick fingers? You blush. You hadn't met it as a d dirty joke or anything. Also, your fingers are nowhere near as quick as hers. She somehow got a piece of paper in your pocket while you were standing in a cafe and she was back here. That's like reverse pickpocketing through astral projection. <laughs> Boulder laughs. She stands up and moves across the garden path, following the spiral so swiftly and efficiently that she might as well be floating. She drifts over to one of the trees, pulling a coat down from where it's where it's slung over a branch. It covers her chin from chin to ankles, coming together to form an olive green symbol on her chest that looks like a question mark without the dot. A broad brim hat finishes out the, out the ensemble. I'm stumbling. Well, I can't teach you astral protection, but pickpocketing is actually quite simple. Would you play the mark? Ideally, we need a third person to act as the mark, but I think we can make it work. More crime, huh? my computer so slow today? No, no. Sure, let's do crime. This whole mess started with the death of a spaceship, and if Boulder is right about all that fate poor shit, then that was supposed to happen? So maybe you'll learn it, lean into it. Perfect. First, the most important aspect of the artist Mentioning the walk in the great big walking around in a great big coat and floppy hat is not the most unobtrusive thing you've ever seen, but you aren't the expert here. Also, you're an alien, so you don't really have room to talk. Maybe you should get a big coat like that yourself. You just you just love ripping looks off at all of your friends. Boulder takes you through the basis of criminal sleight, sleight of hand, and on the whole, you aren't too bad. In fact, you think you might have a future in it if you weren't already on the career path of professional friendshipper. You don't know 
what this has to do with her learning about you or teaching you your place in Alternia, but it's fun, and Boulder is a great, good teacher. If there's one thing in this journey has taught you, it's that when something isn't actively painful or destructive, just write it out. You don't think you'll be going around pickpocketing many tools, enough of them already want to kill you, but it's good to have this skill in reserve if you ever need cash fast and don't feel like hitting up any of your rich friends. You wonder if Boulder uses it for anything besides passing notes. My sources tell me you've been on Alternia for almost three categories now. You have no idea how long a pedigree is, but what the hell, sure. Impressive. No wonder. She trails off awkwardly and shakes her head. You wish she would say something with some substance to it instead of this just vague nonsense. But at least she isn't threatening you with violence or trying to stick wires into you. So you're counting this interaction successful so far. Also, you feel really chilled out with Boulder. Sure, you want to be friends, but there's none of that stomach churny, spin, spine bending, goddamn spine bending desperation to make sure she likes you at whatever the cost. You feel more awake than you have in weeks. Man, you've got to learn to pickpocket in a garden behind a cafe more often if this is what it does to your stress levels. Want to get something to eat? Or maybe just coffee? Maybe have some something surfy. Sure. You could use another caffeinated beverage on top of your other caffeinated beverage you had earlier. Why not? You'll sleep when you're dead, mood. If only... You follow her out of the garden and back into the cafe. <laughs> Who is this now? An yet another friend? Oh, Ardetta, you're still here. Of course I am, fool. You were back there for about ten minutes. Ten minutes? Wow, it felt like way longer than that. You guys, you underestimated the power of good training montage. You introduced Ar Ardetta to Boulder with a cheerful earnestness of someone who's forgotten the systematic classism of the planet on which they currently reside. Our data stops you with an aristocratic sneer. Stop. Stop before I have to stop you myself. I absolutely have no desire to mix with those so low on the social ladder. What in the world could she have to offer me? You shrug. You're not sure. Maybe friendship? You know friendship between people on different castes are possible. You've seen them happen. Regardless, you feel bad for exposing your newest friend to a vaguely nonsensical... Nonsensical... To the vaguely nonsensical abuses of your oldest. You turned back to Boulder to apologize and find her gazing coolly at Ardetta like she could do it all night. There's none of the fear or res res reverence or false obedience you've seen in other low bloods displayed to blues. Me too, Boulder. And so Boulder looks at Ardetta like she's a bug. Worse, a pebble that she would just love to kick out of the way. Nice to meet you in person, Miss Carmia. I heard your GrubTube channel has been losing subscribers recently. I wonder why that is. Blue hits our dad's cheeks in an angry flush. I, I'm currently on hiatus. The old garbage was getting tired. I have so many more intimidators than that that my own content is starting to seem to derivate. Word. But she gets one man manacled laughter. Or laughs. I can't read a simple sentence anymore, guys. I've been sleep deprived. I was about to say I've been sleep depriving myself, which I guess is technically correct, but I haven't been sleeping like I should be. That's probably the ones behind my I can't read simple sentences now. She gets one of her manacle laughter good enough. But it's a little less robust than usual. Man, the wild tundra of the internet fame really is a stark and a rib arid battleground. In fact, I have a new future in the works as we speak. She holds up a little vial that's been she's been haggling with the cash, cash register over earlier. Poison. I think the best most What's up with all the excessive eyes? <laughs> Expedite process would just be to dose my future guest foods and then hide the antidote somewhere in my hives. 
unless you have another idea. She smiles, sly and mean. Holder smiles back, just as finishes. Great, have fun with that. While Boulder talks, her eyes start flickering from you to our data, then down again and again. You are data and down. It takes a couple go arounds before you realize what she's telling you. She keeps looking down to your hands, which are stuck in your hoodie pocket. Exactly where you found the note Boulder slipped you. Her dad is, is carrying a bag that looks expensive and extremely goth. And you can see where the viral of your of poison is sticking out. Oh man, you know what you have to do. Okay. When a group comes into the shop and pushes past the three of you, you move in on our data and slip a hand in her bag, palming the smooth, cold vial. She gives you a weird look, like, why are you suddenly all up on me, peon? But she doesn't notice the death. I suppose I'll be going now. And if I were you, I'd be more mindful of who I choose to associate myself with in the future. You say about her feeling the tiniest bit guilty, but she's planning to use this person to do murder theater in her prison basement, so you don't feel that bad. Take care now. Our data leaves, and Boulder takes an inquisitive step closer. Psst, show me. You open your hand to display, display the spoils, flushed with criminal euphoria. Oh. Oh, hell no. You grabbed the wrong vial. This is blue, not red. You quickly- You grabbed the antidote, not the posen. God, you honestly thought you were moving past these kind of co cock-ups. Oh. Damn. Well, at least you have the antidote now. Never know when you might eat when one of those might come in handy. She sways forward, clutching at her neck. For a confused second, you think she's doing an impression of someone who might need an antidote, and she falls on her knees. You dart forward and catch her before she can totally eat it. She's heavier than she looks, compact muscle and a coat full of ungodly number of weapons. She has like four guns in there. What the hell? Your arms are full, so full you can only watch helplessly as a troll in a hood that covers their face and their horn books it out the door. You shout that some fucker just stabbed your friend, but no one here is looking at you. It's the same way people on Earth might ignore a mother trying to calm a toddler throwing a tantrum, just turning their eyes away from a distasteful public scene. Ow. Damn it. You put a hand to Boulder's neck to try to staunch the bleeding, but there isn't any bleeding. The water you pull apart the labels in her, of her coat see a single drop of olive blood trembling down her above her collarbone. This coloration spreads in the dark spill of her, over her neck and radiating down her chest. You both say it at the same time. Poison. You open your hand to look at the tiny blue vial, and then back up the boulder, her eyes glassy and her skin going blotchy and ashen. There's no reason to believe that our data's poison and the poison the assassin used are the same, with the same antidote. It already strains the powers of coincidence that you grabbed the antidote at all. You're probably right, but maybe you should try it anyway. I can't feel my legs. Right, right! Maybe the mere fact that this is... Such an unlikely happenstance means that it will be the right antidote. Everything you've done so far has had the pull of inevitability to it, especially all of your interactions with Boulder. Great. Awesome. I'm glad you're realizing your inherent significance to this particular micro... Awesome. Of caution. Now, can you please pour that stuff in my mouth so I can swallow it and possibly not die? You help Boulder tip her head back and put the vial to her lips. At the last minute, you wonder if it's supposed to be diluted. But Boulder gulps the whole thing down and immediately begins to shake. Smoke fills up from her nostrils and open mouth. Like, and holy shit, what is going on? This doesn't seem like any type of antidote to you. Then the smoke clears, and Boulder opens her big yellow eyes. How does she feel? Alive. Marginally. She lets you help her to her feet, and you immediately pull her into a fierce yet gentle hug. It's wild to undergo someone else's near-death experience. You feel like you know her way better than one montage scene's worth. Another new friend! Oof, not so tight. You ease up a little. All the tea sippers are staring at you now. 
Death apparently isn't interesting, but the possibility of some quadrant adjacent stuff, they're all, <laughs> they're all suddenly about it. Sorry, assholes. You, just you and your new friend sharing a touching post near fatal encounter. Nothing to see here. Boulder. I like the whimsicalness that's abo about her. Criminal whimsicalness. That's like everything I aspire in, uh, this is gonna sound lame. Skyrim. <laughs> uh, I didn't die! <laughs> what do you think about our whimsical, all knowing friend? Who is also a criminal on the side. <laughs> yeah. I don't know what to say anymore. Hopefully the game audio is there. But if not, it's not like you'll notice much anyways. Because <sighs> it's just me babbling. But... That's it for today's stories. If you liked the video, please give it a like and subscribe if you haven't already to join our wonderful galaxy. Comment down below and I'll get back to you some way or another. And I'll see you for our next adventure. Remember, we're all made of the same cosmic dust, so be nice. Kate, love you. Bye! Bye.